So about a week ago, we got our first look at Smash Ultimate at E3, and so far, I'm just as excited as everyone else is. The game looks fantastic, the graphics look amazing, and I'm really happy to see Wolf and Snake back in the game. However, one of the things I'm the most excited to try out is the new Pac-Man. I'll admit that I kinda slept on Pac-Man at first, but then I started hearing about the changes he received and got excited. To put it simply, some of the things that Pac-Man got are insanely good and will definitely change how he plays as a character. Pac-Man? Oh man! Oh man! Oh man! Oh man! Oh man! Oh man! Pac-Man though! This character got so much. Keep in mind that while I will touch on frame data a bit, I'm going to be focusing more on the individual changes that Pac-Man received, since as DeBuzz said, there are a ton, and the frame data numbers are more subject to change than Pac-Man's new core mechanics. Also, I didn't go to E3, however, Sinji, the best Pac player in the world, was able to go to the Nintendo New York store and play the demo for the game throughout the week. From what I've been told, the weather wasn't great on day 2, so he and DeBuzz got in a ton of games and figured out a ton of stuff about the new Pac-Man. Special thanks to him for being the one that figured out most of this information. With that out of the way, let's get started. First things first, it's important to keep in mind the new mechanics of Smash Ultimate. The game appears to favor more aggressive play due to some of the new movement changes and buffs that have been implemented. Of course, Pack is no exception to this, as his ground and air speed are overall faster now. Being able to do all of your ground attacks out of a run is a really interesting change that gives every character a lot more options out of a dash and makes Fox Trotting a great movement option. Technically, Pac-Man could already do this, but it required a somewhat complicated and difficult tech called Ground and Phantom Fruit, so this is a nice change. In terms of aerials, landing lag has universally been reduced, making aerials a lot easier to space on shield with. While Pac didn't really struggle with this before since most of his aerials either auto-cancelled or didn't have much landing lag to begin with, he still gets a lot of benefits from it. For one, his back air went from 22 frames of landing lag to around half of that, which is insane. This also means that landing up air will be easier to combo out of. The defensive options of this game are a lot weaker now too. Shield got nerfed quite a bit since it now takes an extra 4 frames to drop shield. Combine this with the landing lag changes and whiff punishing seems to be a lot more effective for punishing attacks. Obviously, there's a new roll and spot dodge cooldown increase that was added which nerfs those options and directional air dodges generally make it a lot harder to escape disadvantage state. This hurts Pack a bit since sometimes he's kind of forced to land by spamming air dodge to the ground, but he has some other good landing options that I'll get to later. Due to these changes, the game is going to be a lot more combo oriented and while Pack is a generally defensive of character, some of the changes that he got made to him make him into more of an aggressive zoner. With those mechanics out of the way, let's talk about the moveset changes that Pac got. His jabs, smashes, and forward tilt are all pretty much the same, however all of his other ground moves have received some important changes. Up tilt is straight up a different move now, it's pretty similar to Mario's up tilt appearance wise but probably more useful for anti-airing opponents rather than just comboing them. Down tilt has been made a bit safer on shield due to the animation change that we've got. In Smash 4, down tilt moves Pac-Man forward during the attack, however now the move lurches Pac forward for the hit and then moves him back to where he started the attack, making it a lot harder to punish. Dash attack also has 4 hits now, but it functions exactly the same apart from that. Grab also got buffed a lot. While it still involves the awful tractor beams and has the same amount of startup, the move doesn't have any dead zone hitboxes like it did in Smash 4, meaning it won't randomly miss. Its FAF was also reduced from 76 to about 60, making it end earlier than Link's grab. To put it in perspective how good these changes are, Sinji only missed one grab during his time at the demo, and when he did, the Bayo he was fighting didn't have enough time to react and punish him. This already fixes one of Pac-Man's biggest problems, which was being able to pressure shield since they countered all of his projectiles setups, however it doesn't just end there. Forward throw, down throw, and back throw all have increased knockback, and up throw is a combo throw. It links to the double jump up here from about 30 to 100%, and past that range is the deadly frame trap set that can lean to key or bell. This makes it so that whenever someone shields one of Pac's projectile setups, they actually have to fear grab not just shield everything that comes their way. As far as Pac's aerials go, pretty much all of them have increased hit stun and are safer on hit at low percents. Fair is probably the most noticeable example of this. In Smash 4, Fair was punishable on hit if your opponent could react fast enough, and only launched people that tumble past 100%. However, in Ultimate, Fair starts putting people into tumble at around 30, which is insane. This makes it a really good tech chasing tool, and it makes it a lot better of a combo move. This buff also means that Fair to Key is going to be a lot better of a kill confirm now. Down air is a functional move now too. The hits combo into each other, and the file hit can set up for follow ups. This is a really good change since it gives Pac Man a pretty solid landing option. In addition to the bare landing lag changes, it also comes out a bit faster and has more knockback, making it way more reliable for killing. Pac Man specials are where things get really interesting. The most obvious thing about the new bonus fruit is that it charges a lot faster now, about 15 to 20 frames faster than it did in Smash 4. Unfortunately, Fruit Charge no longer gives Pac Man a vertical boost in the air, which I guess compensates for that buff. All of his fruits can be recaught like in Smash 4, but you can only Z-drop them once before they disappear, which is a pretty significant nerf. However, each fruit gets its regular effects out of a Z-drop, so for instance Z-drop Bell stuns people. While a Z-drop nerf kind of sucks, I think having a frame 1 stun move more than makes up for it. Also, he travels a lot faster now and is apparently unreactable from the other end of the stage, which makes it a lot better at killing people by surprise. 
Pac can still cancel Fruit Charge into his idle animation, however he can't cancel it directly into his specials anymore. Instead, he can now jump cancel his Fruit Charge in the air. Power Pellet has a lot less ending lag, which means that it might actually be safe on hit at mid percents. This change doesn't matter much though, since it's not like you're going to be spacing people out with Power Pellet anyway. What is interesting though is that according to Zenodo, your opponents can eat the pellet mid cast. I'm not sure how much this will change the move, but it's interesting to see nonetheless. Trampoline functions the same in essence, however the move did get one very big change. If anyone hits a trampoline, it turns green and will put anyone that runs over it into a fall state. There are probably some weird setups with this, but there are two main things to take away from this change. First, if you're being too predictable off stage and you have to bounce twice, your opponent could potentially run off stage, hit the trampoline, and kill you. However, this seems kind of situational. The other significant thing about this change is that if you don't want to take shield damage from a projectile, you can use trampoline out of shield and the projectile will get blocked by the hurt box, sort of like with pellet shielding. Like with Pac's other specials, Hydrant works the same way but received a small quality of life change. Pac-Man can now attack the Hydrant wire to completely stop it, letting him not always get pushed away by it when charging fruit. Additionally, Pac-Man can also now reliably catch all of his fruits except for Galaxian Key off of the Hydrant wire, which is a really nice change. There have been some places that are saying that Hydrant has more HP overall. It doesn't. It might seem like it since free for -alls have reduced damage, but it's not the case. Pac's final smash also got a bit of an overhaul, but that's not really relevant to competitive play. Also, unfortunately, his alts are still the same. It's kind of hard to say where Pac-Man will be in the meta after all these changes. His buffs help him a ton and make him overall a more solid and consistent character. However, pretty much everyone in the game got buffed, so it's hard to say where he'll stack up relative to them. I think we could be looking at a potential high tier, however, we'll have to wait and see. For now, I think that he's for sure going to be at least mid tier, and the changes that he got seem to make him a lot more fun of a character to use. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more Smash related content. I'm super excited for Smash Ultimate and I'm going to be making tons of videos for the game once it comes out, so stick around for those. I'll still be making Smash work on in the meantime though. Until then, I'll see you all next time.